We've got this culture now in, in some of these deprived areas where, where people are now are so dependent on food banks, it's like a weekly shop for them. There is this myth in this country that if people are on universal credit, they are in poverty. People in London on universal credit, if they work a few hours, there's a loophole in the, in the, in the universal credit system. They can top their wages up by 30-odd thousand pounds a year. That is not poverty. So un being on universal credit alone is not an indicator that a family are in poverty. And then I asked, why are some families unable to feed their children at breakfast? Why can't they give them a slice of toast or, or whatever? And they struggled to answer me. Then eventually they said, well, it's the cost of living crisis, isn't it? And I thought, well, you know, Weetabix and a bowl of milk, what does that cost? Not even the 30p that I'm famous for. It probably costs a lot less than that. The waste of food is something that I think most of us find it very difficult to see. It's, it's criminal. But does he share my concern, um, and he may not be aware of this, but on Scottish television last summer, there were, there were news stories over a number of weeks about soft fruit rotting in the field because of a lack of seasoning, seasonal agricultural workers to pick it. Mm -hmm. And does he not agree with me that we need to take action to get workers in to pick that fruit? <clears throat> Thank my honourable friend for, for her intervention. She makes a good point. I'm not fortunate enough to, to get Scottish TV uh, where we're rather, we don't, get the, we don't get quite get the signal. But, yeah, there is a problem with, um, in the agri agricultural sector with uh, seasonal, seasonal workers. I, I did have a solution, but I was sort of shouted down when I first got to this place. We've got 90,000 people uh, languishing in jails in this country and about 90,000 people short of picking fruit and, and picking vegetables. I, I think that there's a good start. So if we've got a labour shortage, we need to look... Inwards. Food Foundation published uh, a, an opinion poll today, actually, on extending free school meals to every child uh, whose household is on universal credit. And that poll showed that in his own constituency, almost eight in ten of his constituents support that policy, mm. with more than a quarter of children in his constituency living in poverty. Will he join me in calling on the Chancellor to extend free school meals to every child living in poverty? Thank my honourable friend for her intervention. There is this myth in this country that if people are on universal credit, they are in poverty. And I'll dispel that myth right now. We have people, not just in my constituency, all over the country, it's on universal credit, that has got a household income of over £40,000 a year. Now, that's not poverty. People in London on universal credit, if they work a few hours, there's a loophole in the, in the, in the universal credit system. They can top their wages up by £30,000 a year. That is not poverty. So un being on universal credit alone is not an indicator that a family are in poverty. So I totally dismiss that, that, that idea. But I do admit that some families in this country are struggling and they need our support. I recently visited, well, I say recently, a few months back, I visited a, a school in, in Asheville because parents, concerned parents, had contacted me because the breakfast club had been stopped. Now, they'd stopped providing free breakfast because the private funding they secured had run out. And these parents were concerned, not about their own children, they were concerned about the, the, the more disadvantaged children, the poorer families in the area. So I contacted the school, and I asked what I thought was a reasonable question. And my question was, why are you giving children um, a breakfast, every single child in the morning a breakfast? I didn't get breakfast. My kids, didn't. My, my kids got a breakfast at home. Not, it's, you know, it's something that's new to me. So... Um, they told me that people were struggling to feed their own children at home. And they also said, I also asked them, have you asked for a donation from, from any of the families? Because to, to, the families I was speaking to wanted to make a donation um, to, to the school. They said no. Um, and when I asked them why they're not asked for a donation, they, they couldn't answer me. Um, and then I asked, why are some families unable to feed their children at breakfast? Why can't they give them a slice of toast or, or whatever? And they struggled to answer me. Then eventually they said, well, it's the cost of living crisis, isn't it? And I thought, well, you know, Weetabix and a bowl of milk, what does that cost? Not even the 30p that I'm famous for. It probably costs a lot less. Yes, we know people are struggling. We know food prices are up. We know energy prices are up. We know all this. But you can't keep throwing taxpayers' money, because that's what it is. It's taxpayers' money that we keep throwing at people. That's, that's your money. That's your constituents' money. That's my... I would gladly give away. Talking about obviously community struggling and we had a report last week that said that the minimum benefit paid should be £120 universal credit so we've got people who are, who are receiving £85 so they're already down before we even factor in the rent does he understand the, mag 
the, the, the magnitude of the crisis that people are facing now regarding rent, food, everything that's costing. Is, it, the, is that coming through in your constituency? Because it's certainly coming through in mine and it's certainly coming through in a national yep. picture as well. Does he not agree with me that um, certainly I, I grew up in poverty, deep poverty, and I have to say that my mother, if she had the opportunity to discuss with her local MP how why she was struggling, I, I, I don't think she would have taken that invitation up because I think that's quite... That's quite a difficult conversation, and it could be quite intrusive. I, I might say that uh, you know, your mother, if she'd had a, a first-class Conservative MP like myself, then maybe she'd have been more comfortable <laughs> coming for that advice. Now, I did a bit of work with my local food bank, as you'll probably be aware. Uh, last year, it was, uh, it was reported in, in, in some newspapers. And um, I was delivering meals to, 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 family, to vulnerable families from the food bank with a local chef an award-winning chef. He works at a real, really good restaurant. And after a few days of delivering meals, he said to me, this is, this is wrong. This, this is totally wrong. He says, these people need help. They need proper help. They need teaching how to cook, how to budget, how to, how to cook a meal from scratch. Because what we learned at the food bank was that people couldn't make a meal from scratch. They were struggling to, to cook a vegetable properly, to, to batch cook, to freeze stuff. And so he gave me a challenge. He said to me that I can feed a family of five for 50 quid a week. And I said, no, that's, that's nonsense, that's rubbish, you can't do that. It's our challenger. So he, he put the challenge down. So what we did, we went to the food bank, um, we got them invited to the college, we got the school children there, we got four MPs, including myself, we got the chef, we got some TV there. Uh, and the day before, I got £50 and went to the local Audi with some school children with the shopping list from the chef. And um, we went back to the, to the college the next day and we cooked meals, we cooked five different meals, uh, and we batch cooked and we put them in little um, packs like that, put them away, delivered them later to, to vulnerable families, and it worked out at 30 pence per meal. Now, I'm not saying that people can cook on, on that scale at home, that's just ridiculous, but what we were trying to prove is that if you learn how to cook from scratch, you get the right ingredients, um, and, 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 and like I say, in your batch cook, then you can actually save a hell of a lot of money and make nutritious meals on a budget. Then the 30p, obviously after that, I was tagged as 30p Lee, which I don't mind, because every time you call me 30p Lee, somebody asks me, why do, you call, why do they call you 30p Lee? And when I tell them, they, they completely understand. So keep firing away calling me um, 30p Lee. But what upsets me, or, or it, it, well, it, it does get to me a little bit, you know, we've got this culture now in, in some of these deprived areas where where people are now are so dependent on food banks, it's like a weekly shop for them. They go, and you know, I had one particular family I was helping, really, really helping, um, and they were going to the food bank two or three times a week to get to get the groceries. And then, you know, I see them in McDonald's um, two or three times a week, and I'm thinking, you know, my goodness, I mean, I don't want to stop the little children going for a treat once again, but once in a while. But you know, it's all about priorities. You know, if if you're really struggling for money and you're going to a food bank two or three times a week, you shouldn't be going out for fast food takeaways every week. You shouldn't be doing that. And I know people are going to start sighing and awing and saying he's wicked and he's cruel. Uh, but it, that's the facts. It's nonsense about um, the junk food, the processed food, is cheaper than fresh food. And it's not. And the chefs I speak to say that's absolute rubbish. You can go and buy a bag, a bag of eggs that's still now for a couple of quid and a bit of meat and you can make wholesome, nutritious meals, you know, and batch cook, which is what I, I've done before, which is what my parents have done before. And, and you know, we, we can do that with a little bit of effort, a little bit of education, a little bit of training. Now, people always bleat on about the government all the time. I'll give away. Thank you, Member, for giving away again. He's been very generous with his time. Um, when I visited uh, with the PPG for uh, Need for Food Banks, uh, my uh, honourable member for uh, Blackpool North and Cleveley's constituency, one of the things that we saw were kettle packs basically because people do not have access to equipment to make that nutritious food that he's referring to, they are forced to basically utilise kettles or other means. Does he accept that actually for some people they don't have the means to make the nutritious food in their own homes that he refers to? Hmm. I thank the Honourable Lady for her intervention. We had this problem with our very own uh, food bank, which I helped out at, and uh, we was giving people vouchers to put their, uh, the gas and electric on the meter. And then we had the complaint that they hadn't got any pots and pans, so we gave them pots and pans uh, to, to, to make the food on. Then we had the complaint that they hadn't got a fridge or, or a cooker, 
then we show them how to apply for white goods through energy support grants and stuff like that from through utility companies. So there's no excuse. We can go on all day uh, and make excuses all day. But this is a great country we're living in. And there's lots of support out there to get all these things, not just the food, but the stuff to cook it in and help with their energy bills as well. This government's provided billions and billions of pounds of support over the past two years, especially through COVID, over £500 billion they've, they've, they've spent on taxpayers' money. Now, I want to close now because I know a lot, quite a few people want to speak. Uh, but I'm just going to finish. Um, I'll go back to the 30p league because it's, uh, it's something that comes up every single day on social media. But I'm just going to read out a, a little list I made earlier. These are celebrity, these are chefs, these are uh, celebrity chefs, millionaire chefs, uh, who can make meals on a budget. Leslie Negus can make a meal for 20 pence. Jack Monroe can make a meal for 20 pence. Frugaluck UK's website, 25p for a meal. Savvy Meals can do meals for under a quid. The BBC even uh, have got recipes for meals under a quid. Jamie Oliver, one pound wonders. Asda, doing meals, you can do meals, they've got recipes for under a quid. Uh, Goodtogo.com, under a quid. And there was a food blogger, Jack Monroe, who I mentioned earlier. She was at, celebrated last year in the Daily Mirror for producing a meal for a staggering 11 pence. 11 pence for one meal. And these people were celebrated, they were national heroes. Yet when a Conservative MP tries to help a, a local food bank and help people in his own community, it's actually called 30p Lee, which, like I say, it don't matter to me.